Since alam na natin kung paano gamitin yung table B in sampling or using a random number generator to produce our sample, ngayon naman, gagawin natin or gagamitin natin yung uh, random numbers or table B to simulate an experiment. Now, in simulating an experiment using number generator, we are trying to imitate the chance behavior based on a model to accurately reflect the experiment under consideration. So there are some series of steps na kailangan natin gamitin kapag ka magsisimulate tayo ng experiment. And here are the steps that we're going to use para sa paggamit uh, ng table B at pag-simulate ng experiment na hindi na tayo actual gagawa na experiment or actual experiment. What we're going to do is to uh, use our table B and a pen and paper to uh, see or simulate an experiment. So step one, we need to state the problem. Step two, we need to state the assumption in our experiment. Step three, we need to assign digits to represent the outcome. And this is important. At isa sa pinakamahirap na steps dito sa pag-simulate ng experiment, yung step number three. And step number four, we need to simulate many repetitions using random number generator or yung table B. So i-apply natin tong apat na steps na to sa pag-simulate ng isang experiment uh, using random numbers. So, ito yung first example. Sa example na to, um, gagawa, gagawa tayo ng experiment na experiment natin is to prove na a round of three in tossing a coin or tossing a coin ten times will produce us a round of three. Pag sinabing round of three, yun yung uh, magkakaroon ka na pagka nag-toss ka ng sampung beses, ano daw yung probability na makakakuha ka ng tatlong H or tatlong heads na sunod-sunod or tatlong tails na sunod-sunod. So, kailangan natin gumamit ng uh, random number generator para mag-experiment nitong, uh, ex um, mag-simulate ng experiment na to. So, first, kailangan nating state yung problem. Yung problem is to toss a coin 10 times and to see how many, uh, or the, what is the likelihood of a round of three for tossing your coin 10 times. And step two naman, state the assumption. So, meron tayo tal laging dalawang assumption. Yung first assumption, it could be heads or tails or because both of them are equally likely to occur kasi nga tossing a coin. So, even naman yun at hindi fair coin naman yung gagamitin natin. And also, kailangan din na sabihin yun na independent yung bawat toss to each other. So, independent yung trial at tapos yung uh, pagkuha ng heads or tails will equally likely to occur. And then step number three, assigning digits. Now, maraming ways kung paano tayo mag-a-assign ng digits. Alam natin na yung table B, may mga numbers siya from 0 through 9. So, dun lang nag naglalaro yung mga numbers doon. Tapos, ginrupo lang nila yon into 5. So, it's up to you to logically think kung paano ka mag-a-assign ng heads or tails using random numbers. And to do that, what we could do is to use all the even numbers na makikita natin and it will be represented as our heads or tails kung ano mang pinili nyo. At yung even number naman, yun yung isa sa mga, face, no, isa sa mga faces ng coins, heads or tails. So in this case, odd numbers represent heads and even numbers will represent tails. Yun naman yung magiging assumption ko or yung pag-assign ko ng digits base sa experiment ko. So sa inyo, pwede nyo ibahin yun. Depende sa kung paano nyo isa-set up yung equation. And then step four, magsisimulate na tayo. So ang gagamitin natin sa pag-simulate is yung table B. At dun sa table B, gagamit tayo ng line 101. So we'll start at line 101, tapos gamitin natin yung mga numbers nun at uh, 25 repetition daw yung gagamitin natin. So, kung magsisimulate tayo ng 25 repetitions, so, kailangan natin ng sampung number, at yung sampung number na yon, sampung numbers na yon, yun yung magre-represent magre nung first um, trial natin. At since kailangan natin ng 25 trials, kailangan natin ng 25 na sets of 10. So, ganito yung paggamit nung table B. So, sa line 101, Meron tayong mga numbers na 1, 9, 2, 2, 3, 9, 5, 0, 3, 4, 0, 5, 7, 5, 6, and so on. So yung first trial natin is yung first 10, of, first 10 numbers. At yung second trial naman, yun yung second set of 10 numbers. So meron tayong gagamitin na marami-raming numbers. So kung line 101, bababa lang kayo para magamit yung ibang numbers para makompleto nyo yung 25 na simulation. So, ganito ang mag-simulate. So, sa first simulation, sinabi natin na yung mga odd numbers is heads at yung mga even numbers will be tails and tingnan natin kung dun sa sampu na yun makakakuha tayo ng consecutive number na either heads or tails. At dun sa first run natin, 
makikita natin na meron tayong isang isang set ng three yung three na sunod-sunod. So, meron tayong consecutive heads. So, that means may success tayo dun sa first run natin. Now, dun sa second run naman natin, magsa-start tayo sa 0, 5, 7, 5, 6, at saka 2, 8, 7, 1, 3. So, yun yung second round natin. At dun sa second round naman natin na yun, kailangan natin i-check kung meron tayong makukuhang three consecutive numbers na either even or odd. So, dito, meron tayong nakuha. So, H, H, H. So, that means in that case, Meron success yon kasi nakapag-produce tayo ng tatlong sunod-sunod na heads. Tapos, hindi lang tatlong heads yung nakuha natin. Meron pa tayong tatlong tails. Meron din tayong nakuhang tatlong heads. So, ibig sabihin, itong second round is also a success. So, meron tayong uh, two success, successful rounds na nakakuha tayo ng tatlong consecutive na tails or heads. Now, doon sa third round, tingnan natin kung makakakuha ulit tayo. At doon sa third round, sa next set of ten, Meron tayong tatlong T's na sunod-sunod. So, ibig sabihin, successful na naman yon So, it will be a yes. Now, sa, sabi ko doon sa repetition, gagawa tayo ng 25 na simulation para makita natin yung probability kung paano mangy uh, probability ng pagkukuha ng uh, tatlong sunod-sunod na heads or tatlong sunod-sunod na tails. So, ang pinakita ko lang sa inyo is tatlong rounds. So, kailangan natin ng 25. So, gagamitin nyo pa uli yung table B for the next... 22 rounds. And then, doon sa next 22 rounds na ginawa natin, hindi ko napapakita, pero nakakuha tayo doon ng 23 na may run of 3 at dalawa lang doon yung walang runs of 3. So, kung gagamitin natin yung simulation na yan sa step 5, ang makikita natin probability is 23 out of 25. So, sa 25 na experiments or simulation na gina ginawa natin, 23 doon yung may runs of 3 at dalawa lang yung walang runs of 3. At makikita nyo yun kung pinagpatuloy nyo yung pagkuha uh, ng mga numbers using table B. At yung estimated probability na yun out of 25 repetition is 92%. So there's 92% chance na makakakuha tayo ng uh, tatlong sunod-sunod na either tails or heads every time magtotoss tayo ng coin 10 times. Ngayon, kapag kinuha nyo yung lahat ng numbers dun sa uh, table B from line 101 to line uh, to the, up to the last number under table, ito yung true mean niya. Ang makukukuha nyo doon is 0.826 which is hindi namin natin ginawa. So yung 0.826 is parehas pa rin na 0.92 na yung likelihood niya ay talagang uh, uh, mataas. So yung uh, probability na makakakuha ka ng tatlong runs, eh, talagang mataas based doon sa simulation na ginamit natin. So, yan yung paggamit nung um, random numbers to simulate an outcome. Now, kuha ulit tayo ng isa pang uh, experiment. At yung experiment na gagawin naman natin ngayon is example ng pag-shoot uh, ng free throw. So, ngayon naman, basketball naman yung pag-uusapan natin at magsisimulate tayo ng basketball game using table B. Now, paano natin masisimulate yung basketball using table B? Ito yung mga steps na ginamit ko para ma-solve ko or masimulate ko yung experiment na yan. At ito yung problem na nakapaloob dito sa experiment na gusto kong gawin. Um, according to our word problem, um, Lisa makes 70% of her free throws in a long season. In a tournament game, she shoots five free throws late in the game, and then she uh, missed three of them. And then yung mga fans niya think she was nervous, kaya hindi niya naguha yung uh, mga free throws. Kasi nga daw yung, according to stats niya, 70% daw siyang nakaka kuha ng, uh, or nakakagawa ng, uh, nakakashoot ng ball every time may free throw. Now, ang gagawin natin ngayon is to simulate an experiment and to prove na baka nga kinabahan lang siya noong gabi na yon or meron siyang sakit, kaya three yung um, free throws na na-miss niya out of the possible five. So, dalawa lang daw yung na-shoot na niyang uh, free throws noong gabi na yon so, paano natin siya isi-simulate? So, sa simulation ko, um, I'll be simulating 5 free throws with 70% chance of making the shot. So, ito yung first step ko, stating the problem. And step 2 ko is I need to uh, um, make my assumption. At yung assumption ko is 7 out of 10, kasi 70%. So, mas madali kong in, um, 
in repetition of 10 ko gagamitin. So, 7 out of 10 nung mga free throws niya is lagi daw pasok. Yun is according to sa, sa stats niya. Tapos, each of her shots should be independent para magamit natin yung simulation. So, ito yung step 1 and step 2. Now, step 3 will be assigning digits. So, sa pag-assign ko ng digits, alam natin na meron 10 digits dun sa table B. At since 70% down ng free throws niya, eh, laging pumapasok at a time. Eh, pag-represent niya doon sa table B, mag-assign tayo ng digit, in-assign ko yung numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 as her hits. So, pag nakakita ko ng numbers na 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, ibig sabihin, nakapag-shoot siya ng bola. At syempre, since 70%, yung 30%, yun yung mga misses niya. So, dito, ang nire-represent ng mga misses will be 7, 8, and 9. So, ganyang mag-assign ng digit. Medyo komplikado to pagka gagawin yung mag-isa. Pero pag nag-practice na kayo, mas magiging madali na yung step number 3. At also, step number 3, yung mga pinaka, isa sa mga pinaka-importante dito sa step ng simulation kasi ito yung magde-determine kung paano nyo gagamitin yung table B dun sa experiment nyo. And now, we're going to simulate yung experiment na to using table B. Sa table B, ang gagamitin natin is line... Um, I will use line 125 para sa pagkuha ng simulation. At dun sa, since yung game na yun, sabi dun sa game, um, five free throw shots yung kailangan niyang gawin nung gabi na yun, tas dalawa, tatlo lang yung, tatlo yung na-miss na, na niya. So, paano natin isi-simulate yung uh, game na yun base dun sa totoo niyang stats, which is 70%. So, meron tayong first five. So, yung first five natin, Yun yung first simulation natin nung kanyang uh, five free throw shot. Yung second five, yun yung second simulation. Third um, five will be your uh, third simulation and so on. So, makakakuha tayo dyan ng maraming simulation of games without actually having Lisa to uh, uh, make a basket. So, the first game natin, sa five na game, meron tayong nine, six, seven, four, six. So, ibig sabihin doon, nine and seven will be your miss. Kasi yun yung nakalagay dun sa assigned values natin. So, ibig sabihin, dalawang bola yung hindi niya na-shoot, tatlo yung na-shoot niya. Base dun sa first simulation natin. Sa second simulation naman natin, mapapansin natin na isa naman yung na-miss niya. And then, yung apat ang pumasok. Kasi 1, 2, 1, 4 will be your assigned digit for success. And then, yung sa third simulation natin, or repetition, meron tayong dalawa naman na, na miss siya. Tapos, tatlo yung napashoot niya. At dun sa susunod na game, meron tayong tatlo na na-miss at dalawa naman yung uh, na-shoot niya. Tapos, kapag ka pinagpatuloy-tuloy lang natin yung simulation natin, kasi yung pinapakita ko ngayon, meron lang tayong 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 repetitions, which is not enough para makapag-conclude kung 70% uh, 70 nga yung uh, tamang stats ni Lisa or not. So, Gagamit tayo ng mas maraming number para makuha yung simulation. At yun yung gagawin natin. Mag-add tayo ng 46 more repetitions dito sa naunang apat. At ito yung makukuha nating mga results. So, ginawa ko siya, ginawa ko siya ng table. So, meron tayong number of misses. Meron siyang na-miss na, na zero or wala siyang na-miss. Na-miss na isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, at lima. So, kapag tinali mo yan, yung first set natin, meron siyang na-miss na dalawa, so ilalagay ko siya doon sa frequency under 2. Doon sa second naman, 1, so ilalagay ko yung frequency code under 1, and then under 2 ulit, doon sa third repetition, and so on. At ito yung summary niya. So, after 46 repetition, or after uh, 50 repetition, anim lang doon yung uh, lahat ng bola na shoot niya. Tapos, Sa 1 naman, 15 naman yung uh, mga bola na na-miss niya. At doon naman sa dalawa yung na-miss, 18 naman yung uh, nakuha nating data set or numbers doon sa uh, simulation natin. Sa tatlong na-miss, 10. Sa apat na-miss, isa lang. At sa lima, 0. So, ibig sabihin, after 50 repetition, wala tayong nakita doon na wala siyang na-miss. Kaya, 0 yung number of misses natin for 5. So, mapapansin nyo dyan na kung sa totoong stats natin pagbabasihan, si Lisa, eh, 
talagang magaling namang uh, or totoo naman yung uh, pinakita niyang uh, stats. Ang nangyari lang siguro nung gabi na yon, hindi siya nag-perform really well dahil sa ibang mga kadahilanan. Now, the relative frequency of missing three or more shots in five attempts, according dito sa simulation natin, is 11 out of 50. So, 22% lang na makakakuha siya or mamimiss niya yung uh, uh, bola at a given um, simulation. So, yan yung probability after 50 repetitions. So, ang makukonclude natin na si Lisa will have 22% chance of missing three or more shots. Therefore, Lisa's performance that single game is an isolated case. Kasi, she's probably not feeling well during that game. That's why she missed three out of five free throws during that game. Kasi, nakita natin sa simulation na it would be very rare na tatlong bola yung mamimisses niya. Kasi dito, 22% uh, lang yung probability na mamimiss niya yung uh, three or more shots doon sa giving five free throw shots sa isang game.